kind of grab your coffee and uh, start making your way to your seat, and we'll get going here this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Mark Welsh, and I am incredibly lucky to be serving as the dean of the Bush School here at Texas A&M. Uh, and I, am, I have an official duty this morning that Valerie has assigned me, which is to welcome you to Texas A&M University and to the George H.W. Bush School of Government and Public Service. Um, the Bush School just celebrated its 20th birthday. We're pretty excited about that. We had a number of celebrations during the last year, and everyone who has been here for any part of those first 20 years is pretty proud of where the college has come during that time frame. Over the first 20 years, 70% of our graduates have gone into public service, which we think is a remarkable number. Uh, they're doing great things, and they will change their little piece of the world, and eventually that piece of the world is going to grow, and they'll have a much, much larger impact, and we're excited to watch that. We only have two departments in the Bush School. Our International Affairs Department is number four among public universities in the U.S. now, uh, according to Foreign Policy, which is pretty cool. Um, and our Public Service Administration Department has just cracked into the top 10 percent of all schools of public policy, according to the latest U.S. News and World Report rankings. And no matter how you feel about those rankings, we kind of like the sound of top 10 percent. <laughs> but not nearly as much as we like the sound of top 5%. Uh, and so we believe that events like this one will keep us climbing that ladder. And so most importantly, let me welcome you to the fourth annual Texas Woman Peace and Security Symposium. Uh, I can't tell you how excited we are to have you here and to have all the folks who are gonna drift in and out of here over the rest of the day here for this event. The Woman Peace and Security Program here at the Bush School is the only one of its type in Texas which we're pretty proud of, but we're much prouder of the director of that program, Dr. Valerie Hudson, who we think is the only one of her type in the world. Uh, <laughs> and Valerie has done a remarkable job, in my view, in her efforts to bring the status of women and the issues that affect them into the security discussion and debate. Uh, and the wonderful thing about having all of you here is that so many of you have been right beside her leading the charge in that effort. So thank you so much for that. I do believe we've made progress in this arena, but I also believe we still have a long way to go. And I believe that journey starts with getting all the right voices into the discussion. I think maybe we could agree that for too long, too many of those voices have been male. Uh, now, before you get the idea that I'm a feminist, I'm really not. I don't believe that a woman can do every job better than a man, nor do I believe a man can do every job better than a woman. In fact, I've never really cared whether you were a man or a woman. The only discriminator in my world has always been, how well can you do the job? I spent 40 years in the United States military before coming to this job two years ago. Um, during the last four years of, of that time, I served as the chief of staff of the United States Air Force and had the opportunity to meet a whole lot of really, really great men and women around the world in all of our military services. During my time as chief of staff of the Air Force, I had the incredible honor of officiating at the promotion ceremonies for the first four women promoted to four-star rank in the Air Force. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah, it was a great honor. And each of them in their own way was just spectacular, and I could tell you an awful lot about them and the contributions they made. But let me tell you this, that my support for the first three was complete. I had helped them build their careers. I'd been around them. I knew them for a long time. And when it came time to nominate somebody for four stars and to take the jobs that they were going into, I supported them wholeheartedly and recommended them to my boss for promotion. The fourth one I did not recommend for promotion to four stars. I went to my boss, who at the time was a woman. Her name was Debbie Lee James. She was a secretary of the Air Force. And I told her that while Ellen Polakowski, who was this lady's name, was eminently qualified and very talented and could certainly do the job. I didn't think she was the best person for the job, and she was spectacular in the role she was in at the time. I mean, just absolutely spectacular. Nobody could do that job better than she could. And so my view, being very righteous about all this and thinking about the needs of the Air Force at all times, was that the best way to balance the overall leadership team for the Air Force was to leave Ellen at three-star rank and promote another officer, happened to be a man, who was very qualified for this job as well and more experienced in the area it oversaw than Ellen. And my boss said, nope, you're wrong. And we debated this for a while. She was very emotional in her support of Ellen. I was very emotional in my support of my position. And Ellen eventually was promoted because the Secretary of the Air Force gets to make that decision. And she was spectacular, which was not a big surprise. Now, I mention this to you now only because I was wrong. 
And to me, it was a significant realization. The really important goal shouldn't have been optimizing the overall strength of the leadership team. Everybody we were considering was capable. The real goal should have been to ensure that that leadership team properly represented all of the men and women and demographics inside our Air Force and in the citizenship we represent and defend. I had always considered myself part of the diversity solution until I realized I was part of the problem. And I've carried that lesson forward because it's an important lesson. I didn't do that because I was a male chauvinist. I didn't do it because I didn't mean well. I was very well intentioned, but my thought process was too limited and my perspective was way too narrow. And luckily my boss was smarter than that. And we made the right choice. By the way, that limited narrow thinking, we are all sometimes guilty of that. And we should hold ourselves to a higher standard. And I believe that's what this symposium is all about. It's about broadening our perspective. It's about enlarging our thought process. It's about learning more so that we can influence more. It's about being better than we were yesterday and trying to drag our state and our nation and our fellow citizens with us. So thank you for being here to make that possible. Please join me in welcoming to the stage our host for the symposium, the holder of the George H.W. Bush Chair, the director of the Woman, Peace, and Security Program, and an all-around force of nature here at the Bush School, Dr. Valerie Hudson. Valerie, thank you. so much for joining us here today. It's a dream come true, and for Megan and I, it's, it's, been, a, a, it's been, been nine months, I believe, in the planning, and we're so glad to have you here. I think you can see how, how delighted I am to be here at the Bush School and what kind of support we have from the very top, from the dean of our college. What a good man he is. I'm so thankful for uh, his being here today, and uh, he's going to join us for most of the day, which is pretty exciting. Um, I'm just here uh, uh, to to just start off the conference uh, by saying, uh, howdy. howdy. Excellent, excellent. And now just a few little logistical details, and then we will go and launch into our first uh, keynote speaker, Jamie Doby.